Welcome back, whiskey fans. It's time for another rum review. And it's time to bring out the big guns. This is Hamden. Hamden, eight-year-old Jamaican rum. So, eight years old in Jamaica. Some people say that at those temperatures and humidities, a spirit will age up to three times faster than it would do in, say, Scotland. So, we could liken this to a 24 or 25-year-old Scotch whiskey. And it actually goes as far to suggest that on the label of this rum. My opinion, while spirit in the cask does evaporate about three times faster in a, a warmer climate, maturation is not that simple. I think if it was, then something like a 10-year-old Indian Amrit whiskey would have completely killed off the premium Scotch whiskey industry. And it hasn't. But it is important to note that eight years old is old for a rum. So, Hamden. Hamden is one of the more prestigious Jamaican distilleries, and Hamden has a bit of a reputation. And that's a reputation for funk and very eccentric and high ester content rum, and doing things like using dunder and muck, which I'll probably cover in a later video to add some secret extra character to their spirit. So, Hamden kind of is to rum what... Isla or possibly Campbelltown is to whiskey. Jamaican rum is kind of the rum that you reach for when you want something a bit more adventurous and eccentric and I think that Hamden over in Jamaica really showcases that. Pure single Jamaican rum. It is obviously eight years old. It is a Jamaican cask aged rum. It is natural colour. It is unsweetened because we know that a lot of rums from other places can be heavily, heavily sweetened with sugar and all sorts of horrible things, but this one isn't. It's bottled at a very healthy ABV of 46%, and that's one of the things that really drew me to this rum, to be honest. It's not the cheapest rum out there, but it's also not too expensive. I paid about £60 for this bottle. You can get it a little bit cheaper if you shop around, but basically that's about it. I'll give you a close-up of the label because there's a lot of information on there and I really like the presentation on this one as well. I like that they've got crocodiles and what is that? I think that's a parrot or something like that as well and a butterfly. So lots of local flora and fauna from Jamaica. Like we said about the parrot on the, the doilies, is that kind of the equivalent of Having a, a kilted piper on scotch, it probably is, but who cares? It's fun. You don't get many spirits that have got crocodiles on the label, do you? You really don't. So, yeah, you pay £55, £60, you get a synthetic cork, because they actually think about these things and care about it over in Jamaica. And you get an eight-year-old, premium, funky, characterful, ballsy rum. Let's get some in the glass. Like I've said before, I am a fan of dark glass as well. Protects the spirit. Why not? You can still see the level on this one. I don't know if you can, but it's down to about there. So you can still tell how much is in there, but it gives you a little bit of protection from the sun. So, Hamden, eight-year-old, on the nose. You can immediately tell that this is not the kind of relaxed, easy-going, easy-drinking spirit as you would get from somewhere like Dawley's. It's really a much more eccentric and oddball experience. On the nose, to be fair, I'm getting more of that banana quality. Although perhaps not quite as sweet as what we got in the, the Ray and Nephew and the Dawleys. Brown sugar. And I'm not going to say thin, because that's a negative word, and it doesn't describe what I'm smelling. But I'd, I'm going to say that the flavours on this one are more focused and singular. They come at you, kind of, they form a polite cue, which we all like in Britain. They form a polite cue and they come at you one at a time rather than being a broad, overwhelming experience. The flavours are more focused and singular, but definitely not bland. 
and not thin. It's just rum has a different flavour profile and it takes a little bit of getting used to, or at least it did for me. There's a, a quite a strong black peppery spiciness on the nose of this one. And I don't know if that's because the casks that I've used for this one are particularly fresh or if they've used some virgin oak in this one. But I'm getting perhaps notes of wood spice, but definitely a black pepperiness. There's a, a sour fruitiness to this as well, much like a blueberry fruitiness. Oaky. There's a, a meaty stewed meats note to this one, vanilla cream, and a strong bright apple note, like a spiced green apple note to this. So lots and lots of character, let's see how it tastes. On the palate again, lots of burnt sugar, brown sugar, baking spice. To me, I'm getting a super sweet, spirity, banana and green apple note on the palate of this one. It really does say a lot about Jamaica and Hamden though, that even the fruity, sweet notes on this one are not straightforward. There's even a funk in the fruitiness of this one. The banana is a particularly overripe banana almost a rotten fruit note and this sounds horrendous but you know that note that you get from bins that haven't been emptied like bins with possibly fruit in them on a hot day when you get that slightly fermentary character fermenting sugars on a hot day yeah a little bit of that also getting some raisins on the palate of this rum before it all goes back into that slightly oaky, peppery, black pepper spiciness. Really is full of those slightly rotten, estuary, fermenting, slightly bitter, metallic, greasy, funky notes. As for the finish on this one, I would say long and Again, it's that funky, greasy, banana-y, oak spicy quality that you're left with on the tail end. Another bizarre and eccentric tasting note that I'm getting on this one. I think it's those burnt sugar, sort of burnt brown sugar notes form a bitterness on the late palate and finish of this one that comes across as a little bit briny or even bloody. And before anyone says it in the comments, no, we're not drinking blood. <laughs> but you know when you bite your cheek or something or you've got a toothache and you get a little bit of a little bit of blood on your tongue and you, everyone knows what blood tastes like you do I know you do there's a little bit of that metallic bloodiness in this rum I think all in all this stuff is not only a very good rum but it's absolutely full of character almost a surplus of character and it really demands respect this is Perhaps, and I don't mean this as a criticism, but it's not so much of a casual dram as like your dollies. It's really not a casual dram. This is a rum that demands respect and it's a rum which is an experience. I am wary of giving grades at this point because I'm, I'm still towards the start of my rum journey, if I'm honest. When I look at my tasting notes and I look at Scotch whiskey, we're looking at, I'm well into four figures worth of different tasting notes when it comes to whiskey. When it comes to rums, I'm kind of in the low three figures. So I'm reluctant to give a grade to this Hamden because there's, I'm sure there's lots of other stuff that I might like a lot more than this. And it's very hard to give a grade until you've had a lot more experience, I think. But I do think that this is very, very good rum. And I'd be surprised if anything changed my mind enough for me to not see this as one of the great rums that everyone should go out and try if they can. It has the kind of character in its flavour profile that all rum should strive to have. Interestingly for me is not the comparison between this guy and the Dorleys from Barbados. The interesting thing for me in hindsight is the comparison between this eight-year-old Hamden Jamaican rum 
and the Jamaican white overproof from Ray and Nephew that I reviewed two weeks ago. And this rum is not made by the same people as Ray and Nephew. They are different distilleries. But interestingly, I think you can see some regional similarities between the two. You can see some common tasting notes between the Jamaican Hamden and the Jamaican white overproof Ray and Nephew. And I think it's all about those overripe fruit and burnt sugar notes and as well as a little bit of that bloody note when I reviewed the the Ray and Nephew I said that on the late palette and the finish it had a little bit of a, a kind of urea kidney note to it which is a little bit of a metallic bloodiness I think that there is a, a common metallic note between the two as well as all of those overripe slightly rotten fermenting fruit notes I think it's really interesting that you're getting such common notes between the two Jamaican rums. And I think it must be said that both of the Jamaican rums that are reviewed so far, they are more funky, eccentric and characterful than the, the Dawley's rum from Barbados. But that's not to say that they're not all great rums. I think that all three of these are really good value for money and really good stuff. Another thing that I like about the, the Hamden 8-year-old is that even though this is 8 years old and some people will tell you wrongly, in my opinion, that that's the equivalent of like a 24 or 25-year-old Scotch whiskey, I don't think it is. But it absolutely is true that 8 years is a long time for a rum to be matured and I think that it's really a testament to Hamden that even after 8 years in an oak cask, it is far, far from being cask-dominated. It really stands up to that long maturation. Another thing that I really like about the Hamden, like I said before, is that high ABV. You get this stuff at 46% ABV. And as much as I love the Dawleys, and I, as you saw by the fill level in this one when I reviewed it, this is the one that I reach for when I want a dram that you just want to enjoy without having to think about it too much. This one has gone down faster than the Hamden. But on the other side of the coin, this stuff being bottled at 46%, it gives you an intensity of flavour and a kind of tension in the flavours that you don't get on that 43% Dawleys. One thing that I'm starting to realise when I try these better, not necessarily premium, because they're not, none of these are overly expensive, really, relative to what we're seeing a lot of scotch whiskey being sold for these days but drinking these better rums i am noticing that almost everything benefits from a high abv when you're talking about quality rum i'm yet to see a rum where the high abv makes it too harsh which is certainly not the case when it comes to whiskey there are a lot of whiskies out there where even 46% can make it a little bit too much of a slap in the face if it's not well made. And there are whiskies and blended scotches out there that even 40% seems a little bit too harsh. But when you come to rum, I don't know if it's just that rum distilleries go the extra mile in making a quality product, but I'm yet to find a rum where the ABV makes it too harsh. They're all very well made and very drinkable. And I think that this Hamden, Hamden 8-year-old in particular, is a wonderfully eccentric and excellent rum. And it's something that everyone should strive to at least try once. Let me know what you think of Jamaican rum and Hamden, if you've tried anything. And what do you think about the other expressions from Hamden? Because there's a lot of them and they all have weird and wonderful acronyms, which... Somebody understands, obviously. <laughs> Let me know what your favourite rum is from Hamden and what you'd recommend. And I'll see you next time. Cheers.